Carson, I saw you say that the money doesn't matter to you. This is your team, your program, where you want to be. How special is Washington to you? I mean, there's there's really no place like it. Um, and that's why I said what I said and I meant what I said. Um, NIL has really changed the game. And obviously, there's people out there, they want to get what they're worth. And that's 100% like respect to them. And maybe they'll jump ship or go to a different fit. Uh, for me, it's always been UW. I grew up season ticket holders. Uh, I went to every game, envisioned myself running out of that tunnel. Uh, so when I got that opportunity to do so, I really couldn't turn that down. And now, been here through all the coaching changes, through ups and downs and everything. Um, it's still a place that I love. I mean, it's the greatest setting for a reason. Um, so yeah, no place like it. There's been a lot of change with the staff, like you said, new conference, yeah. but you're a constant with this program right now, which I think is a program that's looking for that. So what does that put on your plate from a leadership point of expectations? Yeah, it feels like I got to step it up a little bit. Um, I felt like I've been a good leader. Uh, I've led by example, led by voice uh, and so forth. But now being that constant, being only a few people that are still left on the team that have playing experience and uh, being able to play throughout the last few, few years, especially with all the young guys coming in, uh, I feel like I've, I got to take on that task of kind of getting up, getting them up to speed, learning the new playbook fast. I mean, this is my third or fourth playbook that I've had to learn. So I've kind of gotten used to that and being able to get that down pretty quick. But really just bring those young guys up because they're going to have to be playing on Saturdays and uh, I'm going to have to count on them. It's not every year one college offense has a quarterback going in the top 10, a wide receiver going in the top 10, and then countless players right after them. Absolutely. How much better did that make you practicing against those guys where it's, it's an all-star college offense basically last year? Every day. Yeah. Every single day. I mean, Mike, I've never seen anyone throw it like it. It's insane. Uh, even Dylan Johnson at running back, um, our whole offensive line, the Joe Moore winners, and then you just move out to wide out with Rome, J-Mac, JP. Like, we had talent throughout the whole board, so – practicing against them every single day, Devin Culp tied in, Jack West, like I can go on and on, right. but it's literally like you're playing against NFL players right there. And I got to be able to experience that last year while I'm still in college and still have a year left to continue to develop my game. Uh, so I took that every single day as a challenge. And I'm like, hey, these are the best of the best. Like they were one of the top uh, offenses in the whole entire country. Um, so if I can defend them and if I can stop them, then I feel confident stopping anyone. It feels like Coach Fish didn't waste any time getting reinforcements in. Will Rogers, at quarterback, a guy with a ton of production in the SEC, how have things looked for him and his comfort level so far? Yeah, it's looked good. I'd be, uh, I've been able to get really close with him. Uh, he's one of my good friends. Um, he seems like he's getting the playbook down pretty fast. I mean, I'm not on offense. So I don't know their whole playbook and their schemes and everything, uh, but he's a natural-born leader. I mean, he came out here since day one. Uh, he feels comfortable talking from the whole team, and every time we're out there, uh, He'll be on offense, I'll be on defense, and we like to talk a little bit, just a little friendly trash talk. Uh, but he really rallies the whole troops, everyone together. Uh, during workouts, he's very vocal, and during our team runs, he's like, nope, like if anyone's off their game, like he kind of snaps in, but not in a bad way as a way of just being that great leader to hold everyone accountable. And what's great for any quarterback is a running back that could turn around and just ask him to carry a heavy workload. And Jonah Coleman comes over, of course, with Coach Fish right away from Arizona. So a proven you know, commodity at the running back position. What about him and his fit in this offense? Yeah, I feel like he's going to fit well. Um, but even elaborating on that, our whole entire running back room, like they could go for the top running back room in the country uh, from, from top to bottom. Jonah Coleman, uh, I mean, we have CD back from injury, Cam Davis. Uh, we have a young guy, Adam Muhammad, Sam At like it, the list goes on and on. And they've really developed themselves really well during spring, during off-season training. And now coming into the season with Jonah, CD, and those the kind of older guys, and then with the younger guys following, like I feel like it's a good one-two punch with them. We can throw in anyone and feel confident. So for those that don't know, your dad being a scout for the Pittsburgh Steelers, when he has to write the scattering report on you, are you going to be allowed to read it? Like, how's that going to work? So I've, <laughs> I've talked to him a little bit about that because I'm like, there's no way they're going to let him scout right. me because I'm like, you're too nice of a guy. Like, you like me too, like all that. It's a tough job, you but, gotta be honest. Yeah, but one thing I did tell him, uh, especially now going into my last year having uh, pro desires, I told him, I'm like, you, you can't lie to me. You can't sugarcoat anything. I want everything straight. I'm like, I don't want to be told, oh, you can be a day two guy when maybe I'm a day three or be a day two guy. And he's like, ah, you got to keep working hard, whatever. Like, I want him to push me, but at the same time, I want the honest truth from him. And that is something that he completely agreed with. And he's been able to develop, uh, deliver to me. 
obviously he was a special player in his own right. How special was it to you to wear his Rose Bowl jersey when you walked into that stadium at the end of last year just to kind of pay tribute to what he did for your football life? Absolutely. I mean, it, it meant a lot. Um, we kind of talked about it the weeks following or the weeks prior uh, leading up to the game, and uh, I had him bring it down. It was actually in a frame. He took it out of the frame, traveled with it, gave it to me the day before the game, and kind of being able to put that on and then really walk in to the Houston uh, Texans Stadium and wearing that on the walk, like it, it just it still gives me goosebumps to this day, kind of paying tribute to my dad and the accomplishments he had, but as well as really all the former Huskies and that, especially that 91 team. I mean, they did great things. And uh, last year was something where we looked up to that team a lot and try to see, and I asked my dad a lot, like, what are the Tennessees? Like, how was that team like trying to find any bits and pieces? Because obviously their success, like it didn't go unnoticed. Uh, so we try to match that in a way, but in our own style. So away from just being a linebacker, you have quite the reputation on special teams as well. Eight tackles last year on specials, eight tackles the year before on specials. What do you love about that side of the game? Yeah, it gives, it's almost just a different twist between like defense and offense. High school, I really didn't play special teams other than punting. Um, I mean, I kicked once or twice, <laughs> but really Pretty good at that, it. I, I was pretty good at kicking, yeah. Um, started at a young age. So Maybe emergency punter at, yeah. for Washington? I don't know, but I'm, I feel like I'm better <laughs> Field goal kicking okay. than punting. Maybe an but, extra point if need yeah, be. I'll let Grady Gross stick to that. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's money. But it's just different, like what I was saying earlier. It was just different. I mean, being able to be on kickoff, just have that freedom to just run full speed, hit people, make plays, be on punt, be able to block, kind of like my dad did growing up, and be able to watch that. I mean, I loved playing tight end uh, growing up as well and being on the offensive side. So it just kind of gives that different taste of football. Uh, other than defense. What has the message been from Coach Fish since he got there? Because it's it's such a unique spot for you, right? You were a big part of a team that went to the national title. And while there's all this change, there's still a culture instilled of winning at Washington. So he needs to kind of keep carrying that torch. What has the message been from him to do that? Yeah, it's really just, it's not a rebuild. I mean, obviously we have right. a lot of new players coming in, but the culture is the culture and the standard is the standard. I mean, we went to the national championship last year. We have dreams and aspirations to do that again this year. Uh, it really doesn't change anything. Like you mentioned earlier, we had a lot of players go on to the league, and we wish them the best in the league because obviously their accomplishments were shown. Uh, we had some people transfer out and uh, to each their own. Like they each had their own decision, and they decided to do it, and I wish them the best. Uh, but really, we got who we got, and that's who we're going to roll with. Um, and once the, one thing we always say is everyone's counting us out, social media, a bunch of people are kind of looking down upon Washington saying, well, you lost everyone, you guys won't be good. We don't care. We're going to come into the season. We're just working. We're working out in this offseason. We're training harder than we've ever trained. Um, and we're going to come out in fall camp next week. That's when we started up and really just kind of get after and get ready for our first game on the 31st. So you made the playoff when it was just four teams. It was as hard as it could be. Now that door opens as it expands. It's going to be a little chaotic, a little bit of fun. But is there also some excitement that brings with a bigger college football playoff on the horizon? Absolutely. I feel like it gives a lot more teams opportunities to reach that goal of a national championship. Every team comes in every single year, hey, we want to win our conference, but we also want to win the national championship. I felt like with four teams, it's kind of hard to really get the best fit in there uh, because there could be a team that maybe only has one loss that can get left out when it's, you know, it's all up for debate. But I feel like having 12 teams, it's going to give all those teams an opportunity to go out there and basically prove their worth. So the story's far from over, but when your career at Washington ends and you go on to the NFL and lifelong fan of this program, obviously through so much at this program, what will you look back at, you know, the best part of playing for this university? I feel like running out of that tunnel in front of 70,000 screaming fans will be something I'll never forget. Um, the atmosphere, having it be the greatest setting, being on Montlake, on the lake, like all of that is something where a lot of people don't truly understand unless they get to come here and play here and run out of the tunnel. I mean, I was a fan, I got the fan point of view, and then now I'm a player and I get the player point of view. And it gives me, I'm, I'm going on my fifth year and every single time I run that tunnel, it's goosebumps, I'm nervous. It's just seeing those fans and I feel like we got the best fan base in the country, hands down. Thanks, Carson. Yeah, thank you.